everyone, and welcome to our Monday, August the 23rd edition of Track Announcer's Notebook. Pat Gonzalez, along with my co-host, Stuart Nodell. Um, as I'm sure everyone on the webcast tonight knows, we lost a Canadian motorcycle road racing icon last Tuesday with the passing of uh, Yvonne Duhamel at the age of uh, 81. And tonight's show, um, once we uh, cover Nodell's notes, is going to be dedicated to remembering Yvonne Duhamel, the man, the racer, and really the mentor for not just his two sons, Miguel and Mario, but I think for many uh, racers, whether you're Canadian or American or not, um, he was just an incredible person and a multi-talented racer. And we've got Dave Lloyd who uh, raced uh, against uh, Yvonne, as well as Jim Allen who raced against Yvonne and, uh, you know, worked with Miguel for many years when he was with Don Lop. So we will get into all of that. We've got some incredible photos that uh, have been shared by uh, Bill Petro, some photos from the uh, Cycle Canada archives and a number of other individuals have shared a photo they may have taken with Yvonne over the years. So we'll take a, a walk down memory lane, but first up as always, Nodell's Notes. Stuart? Yeah, thanks, Pat. I uh, just wanna welcome both Jim and Dave to join us uh, this evening and thank them for, for joining. Um, this past weekend, Pat, uh, was not as busy of a weekend, but I just wanted to first share some updated news on uh, SOAR regular road racer, Mike Grass, who had the you know, horrific crash at CTMP a couple weeks back in the pro sport bike race. And it looks like he's been moved from critical care to an IC unit here in Toronto. Well, I think the doctors are hopeful, you know, right now, um, you know, they're waiting uh, to assess uh, what uh, the injuries may be. Uh, Mike didn't have any broken bones, but there were head injuries, and right now they really don't know the extent of that. There is that uh, GoFundMe uh, fund that's been set up uh, to help Mike's family. He's got a young family. And uh, I know this weekend at the SOAR round, there'll be a number of fundraising initiatives uh, to, again, help, uh, help Mike. So if uh, any of the racers are going to be on, uh, on the show tonight, uh, we, uh, we wish everybody well this coming weekend at, uh, Grand Bend. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get out there or not, but, uh, I'm sure they'll have a great turnout and, uh, there's some fundraising going on, uh, for Mike, uh, Mike Grass. And then and actually, before we go forward, Pat, I just, I did get some news about Ivan Babic, who also crashed during uh, pro super bike race number one at CTMP. And he had successful collarbone surgery today. And he's looking to be on the men, but he'll be out for the balance of the season. Yeah, unfortunately, I've been involved in that crash at turn five at the Moss hairpin. And apparently the bike flipped end over end. And, uh, you know, he was uh, up there a solid ton, top 10 runner, but uh, his season is over. We look forward to seeing him back uh, in national superbike competition next year. And uh, this past weekend, they raced at a new track in Spain, uh, Narana, I believe it's called, Pat, for World Superbike. And Toprak Razagadali Golu. I can't, that's a, too much of a tongue twister. I've got a That's a call track announcer nightmare. <laughs> just call and him he, Raz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, uh, he had a great solid weekend. He won one of the legs and uh, finished podium on the other. You can see he finished third in leg one. Um, and he's taken the lead. Him and actually Johnny Ray are tied for the championship. Yeah, I mean, Ray has won all those uh, World Superbike uh, championships, I think six in a row. And I think uh, Raz may be uh, looking at wrestling that away this year. But they still have a number of rounds to go. And uh, World Superbike's been extremely competitive this year. Um, and again, as we've said it before, hopefully somewhere down the road, we've got a track uh, here in Canada that uh, can be, uh, you know, approved for a World Superbike nice round, as uh, we did have uh, a couple back here in the late, uh, late 80s. Yeah, and then uh, 
Here you can see in the second leg, uh, Toprak did win just over Scott Redding. And in other World Superbike news, Pat, there's uh, some rider changing that's going to be taking place for next year. Alvaro Bautista is going to be leaving the Honda squad and going back to the factory Ducati team. And um, Scott Redding's leaving Ducati and heading to BMW, which is going to leave Tom Sykes without a ride. All right. Well, usually musical chairs. There you can see the, uh, the championship uh a battle that's going on right now, tied between uh, Topak Razakatoglu and uh, Jonathan Reyes. Couldn't be any uh, closer than that. And Redding's not out of it there in third. If he can put together a string of wins, he can be right there. For sure. And then just wanted to announce uh, Tom Lutti, who's a pretty well-known Moto2 rider, Pat. He's announced his retirement following this season. He was the 2005 uh, World 125 uh, GP champion, and he he's holds a, a record with most podium appearances with 65 um, between the two classes that he's raced in, and uh, he'll be leaving at the end of the season. All right. And then this past week, and I don't know if you caught any, but I'm sure you were busy at Shenandoah, Pat. I was fortunate enough to uh, get on social media, and they showed a lot of the Peoria TT which looked like a, a really great event. And uh, former road racer and fill-in superbike rider J.D. Beach took the win in the uh, Super Twins category. Yeah, well, there's another multi-talented rider. He can do it on the pavement or uh, in dirt track. And I tell you, if there's a, a road racing team looking to get a rider on for next year, then uh, I think J.D. Beach would be right at the, uh, the top of the list. But... Uh, not too often uh, anything but an Indian wins one of the American flat track races, but it happened this past weekend in the uh, Peoria TT. And then you can see in the championship, Briar Bauman still has a, a pretty good uh, stranglehold on the championship, but it's definitely things are tightening up and uh, they have a great series in uh, American flat track. Yeah, it only takes one bad round and then all of a sudden, you know, that championship's going to really, really tighten up. In the, the production twins class, Vance and Hines brought out two riders, Jesse Janich and Hayden Gillum, who's also a former road racer, pretty well known. Um, they both finished in the top five, but Dan Bromley took the win. Yeah, and there you see another road racer, four-time Daytona 200 winner, Danny Eslick, uh, back there in, uh, in seventh. Um, you know, again, Eslick's been around for a while. And uh, right now, filling his calendar with uh, some road races, but a bunch of flat track events as well. Yeah, and Corey Texter's got a pretty uh, good lead uh, in that category as well. All right. In the singles, Henry Wiles took the win over Max Whale. Yeah, and that championship, I think, is another one that will probably go down to the uh, final race there you can see Max Whale only 16 ahead of Dallas Daniels who's a very talented teenager and uh, old Henry Wiles uh, can still get around uh, a, a dirt track even though he's been doing this for a long long time and then uh, you shared with me Pat uh, that the Bonneville Salt Flats are coming up with the AMA Grand Championships uh, August 29th to September 1st at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Yeah, and I know Dave Lloyd uh, has been to Bonneville and raced the Streamliner uh, a number of, uh, number of years ago. Uh, Dave, before we move on to honor Yvonne Duhamel, uh, what do you remember of your year uh, that you went to Bonneville? Well, I was actually there, Pat, on uh, I think two or three occasions. Um, with the Bob Williams team and the, the Honda 500cc uh, streamliner that uh, Bob was running at the time, his goal and target was to try and capture the 500cc uh, championship. Um, I think it was set in 1956 at just uh, 214 miles an hour. I believe that was a number and Bob was making an attempt to, uh, to beat that record. Um, he did with another rider from Gary Hensley from Michigan on a one-way run on one occasion. They did manage to run up to 228 miles an hour. 
um, but were unable to make the return run because they encountered a flat tire, front flat tire, which ended up in a pretty spectacular crash. A um, couple of years later, I was invited to run it myself. Um, not successfully, on the first occasion, we ran into mechanical problems. Uh, the visibility running the streamliner was not through a windscreen, but through a periscope, which is something like a rear view mirror of your car. And uh, what we encountered was vibration from the body of the streamliner to the periscope, which blurred the vision. So I couldn't see where I was going. <clears throat> Excuse All right. me. So we aborted that attempt. Uh, my second attempt, uh, a couple of years later, uh, we managed to get mobile and uh, on a run, I guess somewhere between the first and second mile marker. Uh, I don't know what speed we were going, but it's a pretty good clip. Um, I ran into so some soft salt, which caused the uh, streamliner to uh, start wobbling. It eventually went down on its side. And according to the officials after the incident, they said it slid like something, something like a half mile before it hit the wheels and then started pencil rolling and uh, you know crashing and banging around quite a bit. Uh, damaged the streamliner that uh, it was not used again. Uh, I fortunately was able to walk away unharmed. So, and then you retired. All right, Stuart, <laughs> anything else uh, uh, on uh, Nodell's notes? No, that wraps it up, Pat. But just on one other little side note, I know Bar Hodgson did the Bonneville Salt Flats on a GSXR 750 or 1000 around 2002 or 2003. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are a number of Canadians uh, that have gone down there to, uh, to try it, but that's uh, coming up at the end of August. But uh, we want to move on to the uh, reason for tonight's show as we pay tribute to the great Yvonne Duhamel. And uh, I couldn't think of uh, two better gentlemen to come on the show and talk about their experience racing against uh, Yvonne Duhamel and sharing some of the, uh, the stories. Jim Allen and uh, Dave Lloyd, welcome and thanks for, for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, Jim, let's uh, let's start with you because when I first started announcing in 1973, there was this uh, young racer on the uh, Yamaha, uh, the uh, Dealey Imports Yamaha squad by the name of Jim Allen, and there was a young Yvonne Duhamel racing for Manly Kawasaki, and you were two of the uh, obviously the prominent racers at that time. What, what do you remember of, uh, of that 1973, you on the Yamaha, Yvonne on the Kawasaki's? Um, Pat, a lot. But uh, I, I, I guess I, what I would like to say first before we really get going is that I just want to offer my condolences to, to Sophie and, and Gina and Miguel and Mario. Uh, your dad was just a tremendous, tremendous person. He was, a, he was uh, many, many of us, as you guys know, and, and uh, people around the world know, we were in awe of Yvonne whenever he was on the racetrack, you know, and whenever he was off the racetrack for that matter, you know, but um, yeah, I guess the thing that um, one of the things that, that sticks with me um, the most is just the absolute ferociousness and tenacity that, that Yvonne demonstrated time and time again, year after year, race after race. I mean, he was one of the, I mean, I talked to Doug Libby earlier today and Doug mentioned the same thing. It came to, you know, both of our minds right away. But having said all of that, Miguel was, or Mario, excuse me, Yvonne was 100% fair. He would not give you one inch on the racetrack, but he was absolutely fair all the time, you know. So in 73, I mean, my ride, um, I, just to back up a little bit from that, Dave was instrumental in getting me my first ride with Yamaha. And then I I left in 72 and then went back again in 73. And, and um, you know, I was lucky enough to win the number one plate that year. But between between racing with Yvonne in the States and racing with Yvonne in Canada, there was just so many racetracks and so many so many times we raced together and stuff. And, and I can say that I was fortunate enough to beat him a few times, but he was never a beaten man ever, as you know. He was, he was a, to this day, I mean, I just can't say enough good about the guy, you know. So. Dave Lloyd, uh, you raced against Yvonne uh, before we went on the show. We were talking about 
the uh, Canadian Grand Prix back in 1967. You were there racing. Yvonne was there racing. What do you remember of that uh, that weekend? Well, um, <laughs> the most memorable thing, I, I guess several things. Obviously, um, it was the one and only Canadian Grand Prix where we had all of the world champions, Mike Hale with Giacomo Agostini, Bill Ivey for Reed, uh, Jack Finley, and so on. Uh, and all of the exotic machinery that they brought with them Unless you had been racing in the European circuit, you would never see or hear that equipment uh, unless you were there. Um, so that was one thing. The second thing was the atrocious weather for the weekend. It was a bitterly cold weekend and a damp track, and it was not pleasant at all. Um, Mike Hayward and Agostini and all of the European riders were freezing, so... Uh, it wasn't a pleasant experience for them as far as that was, that was concerned. But with respect to, uh, uh, to Yvonne, and I didn't see this myself, it was what Yvonne, Yvonne told me personally uh, sometime later. I believe it was the 125 race. He told me that sometime during the event, his left hand clip on handlebar broke off the stanchion or the, or the mount. And uh, he, he struggled around. And when he would get to the start finish line where the officials were all uh, located, Yvonne would bring the clip on back up to the stanchion and make it appear as if he had two good handlebars and carry on from there. Um, only Yvonne could uh, carry on with something like that and manage to stay on board. Um, I agree with absolutely everything Jim said about him just a spectacular competitor and a great human being. We were, uh, I, you, you say I raced against uh, Yvonne, uh, more a case of racing with him because I believe he was in a class of his own with all the other world champions. Yeah. Jim Allen, um, the, the racing here in Canada back then, 73, 74, uh, you're on the Yamaha, uh, Yvonne on the Kawasaki's, and you mentioned Doug Libby, but the competition was pretty intense then. Yeah. There were so many good riders from the United States who yeah. had come up to Mosport at the time, now Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and I can remember announcing those races. They were extremely competitive, and I want to talk a little bit about the uh, 250 class, uh, 250 Grand Prix. You guys were on those fast Yamahas. Uh, Kawi really didn't have a 250 twin. They had that big horn uh, enduro bike that they used that air-cooled 350 yeah. that could run with the 250s. And Yvonne was just riding the wheels off that motorcycle trying to keep up with you guys. What do you remember of some of those classic 250 races with Yvonne do them out? Well, it, I think it's fair to say that, you know, that, that Yvonne made that motorcycle look good. Um, you know, it was not nearly in the, as, as fast or, um, it, I think that the chassis, basic chassis was quite good, but, and that enabled Yvonne to ride the wheels off the thing, but it wasn't close to being competitive for top speed and stuff, except when Yvonne made it competitive, you know. Um, he just never, ever gave up. You know, he never acknowledged that he was beaten, even though, you you know, we're looking at a, a back straight at most for uphill and, you know, a big long straightaway and, he, he knew he couldn't keep up with us, but didn't stop him from trying, you know. Um, he just would not give up, you know. And, um, and he, you know, as I say, he made that motorcycle look good. It was a great little bike, but it wasn't the class. It wasn't the same class as the Yamaha, depending on the racetrack. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Dave Lloyd, what, uh, what about you? Is there a uh, particular race that comes to mind where you were uh, racing uh, with Yvonne that uh, stands out all these years later. Uh, well, I'm going to confess to one embarrassing situation. Um, as you know, I worked with Trevor Dealey Yamaha in the Toronto office many years ago. I got a call, phone call from uh, Trevor. He said, I want you to prepare a 350 for Yvonne to run at Pocono, Pennsylvania. So I did just that. I went to the warehouse, took a 350 out of the crate and put it together, did absolutely nothing to it. We ended up down in Pocono, Pennsylvania and uh, Yvonne and I were in the same race. 
this is where the embarrassing part comes in. First of all, at some time during the race, Gary Nixon passed me, followed very closely by Yvonne on the absolutely bone stock 350 Yamaha. Uh, Gary Nixon was on the factory triumph. When Yvonne went by me, he waved. And I thought it was a friendly gesture as a team rider. <laughs> After the race, Yvonne came to me <clears throat> and sort of chided me for getting in his way. <laughs> Apparently, I was in the racing line at the wrong time when Yvonne was coming through. So, <laughs> an embarrassing moment. Yeah. Did Yvonne beat Nixon that day? Did he win that race? Uh, no, I think Gary went on to win it, but understandably so, because as I said, there was a, that was a bone stock Yamaha. Uh, I think it was a TR3. So, yeah, he, he was, Jim Allen, um, what about you? Is there a particular, you, you mentioned you've got a, a few different uh, uh, Yvonne Duhamel stories. Why don't you uh, share one of those uh, with us? The one I, one I remember um, from racing in Canada with, with uh, Yvonne, I was riding for Yamaha Canada at the time, and Yvonne was riding for Kawasaki Canada at the time. And um, I, I told Miguel this story in, in a text I sent him earlier this week, or, or late, late last week, rather. But um, basically, those have been to a Senair will remember, you, you turn left onto the oval and then go around the oval and come out on the front straight. Well, Yvonne and I had been back and forth in practice, and it was pretty intense. But basically, I got to the uh, left hand turn onto that oval first. And from behind me, I hear, burp, 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 burp. <laughs> Yvonne is obviously locked up the back brake, and I'm thinking, I got to turn. There's nothing I can do. I got to turn, you know. So the next thing I know is, wham! He hits me from behind, and I go off. I go off the racetrack and uh, on back onto the racetrack a different place. I come around anyway. I, as I recall the story, I won the race, but I got disqualified. The organizers disqualified me because I didn't go back on the racetrack exactly where I went off. You cut the course. Exactly. Yvonne <laughs> went crazy. He went nuts. He went after the organizers and reamed them. He said, there's no way I'm going to take first place. Jim Allen won this race. Give it back to Jim Allen. And, um, and to me, I mean, as I say, all the time I raced with Yvonne, I was in awe of the guy. And, and you know, for him to go that extra measure and, and in his mind, he cost me that race. And he wasn't about to accept first place because he didn't think he earned it. You know? And yeah. uh, I, think, I think that just says a lot about the measure of the man, what type of guy he was, what kind of a competitor he was. You know, so. That's Dave, Lloyd, Dave yeah. Lloyd, what, uh, what about you? Uh, any other stories besides uh, getting in his way at Pocono? <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's one, uh, the year at Daytona, um, when Yvonne set a record, qualifying record of 150 miles an hour on the 350 Yamaha. Um, I believe there were several of us riding for Trevor at the time, including Mike Duff and myself, and uh, I think Pete Calland and Tim Coopy. But um, Yvonne hit the 150 mark, and Mike Duff and myself, and I think Peter, we were around the 147 mile an hour mark. So I went to Yvonne after I said, how did you manage to get that extra mile per hour out of your machine? We're basically running the same bike. I don't, I don't know whether it's true or not, but Yvonne told me, he said, we went to Goodyear and asked them what was the highest tire pressure we could run safely. And uh, he pumped his tires up for, to reduce the rolling resistance. Whether that's a true story or not, I don't know. Jim, you're you're the tire guy. Does putting a little more PSI in the tire uh, get you a little bit faster? It works on wheelbarrows, I can tell you that. You know. Okay. <laughs> I so think it's probably true. You know. <laughs> now that we're on to uh, to Daytona, both of you guys know your way around a racetrack on a 250. Um, you know, uh, Yvonne never won the 200. He was second in 68. The same year he won the first of two international lightweight 250 races. It's tough just to win one of those at Daytona, but I think 
those back-to-back 250 races at Daytona in 68 and 69, along with his second in the 200 behind Cal Rayborn in 68, that certainly has to stand out as to one of the high points in his racing career. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. I think, uh, you know, Yvonne, you have to remember that like a lot of us that went to race and went to race in the States or go to race in the States. Now we were country bumpkins, you know, nobody knew who we were. I mean, people knew who Yvonne was, but they didn't know who, you know, people in California didn't know Yvonne, but when he put the, when he laid the marker down, people knew that he laid it down, you know, and, and um, he wasn't going to take any kind of BS from any kind of rider, no matter who he was or where he was from, you know, he was going to, he was going to show everything he had and he, and he did. And it was like to go against the competition that, um, that was um, it, it, that Daytona in, in 68, 69 and, and do what he did. It's absolutely remarkable. You know, it's, you go down there with a, if you're not careful, you can go down there as Dave probably can attest. You go down there with a psychological disadvantage almost, you know, like these are the big guys. These guys know what they're doing. They got the fancy leathers and, and it's so difficult. It was difficult for me at least to overcome that. You know, I think I got to the point where I did okay with that, but didn't bother Yvonne. He didn't care if he had leathers on, he was going to beat them anyway. (laughs) Dave, what about you? Uh, Your, your race is there uh, at Daytona in the 250 class. Well, Another sad story for me in the 250 class. Uh, on one occasion, I actually led the first lap of the. Uh, I can't remember what year. I led the first lap, and uh, on lap two in the infield, Ronnie Pierce went by on the inside of me, and uh, I think Jim will appreciate this. When you're going at speed, for us, it's almost like being in slow motion. So I was quite calm and casual about it. I thought, okay, I'll just move over here and I'll get him to the next, next corner. Well, I didn't realize that it had started raining and uh, the machine went completely sideways and I ended up in a heap in the grass. So uh, that's as far as I got on that 250. But uh, uh, I had started, gone from the sixth row to the front on lap one and I felt very comfortable, but... Uh, it just wasn't my day on that occasion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to Stuart Nodell for just a moment. I think we may have a question or two in the Q&A. But again, for those who have joined us uh, here on Track Announcers Notebook, uh, at the bottom of your screen there, you should see the Q&A. If you've got uh, a comment or a question uh, for Jim or Dave, uh, please send that along and uh, Stuart will get to it. And again. Um, if uh, you've got a, a fond memory you'd like to share with us about uh, Yvonne Duhamel or a story or a race you saw him run over the years at the racetrack, we'd love for you to share that memory with us. Stuart? Yeah, thanks, Pat. There's a couple here. The first one's more uh, about the great job you did at Shannonville on the weekend announcing. So I just wanted to point that out to you. And uh, everyone loves when you announce. You did a great job at CTMP the week before as well. Um, as far as a comment about Yvonne, and maybe Jim or Dave can confirm it, uh, I was there was an article about Yvonne used to disassemble his motorcycle and put it in the trunk of his Mercury and drive it to the racetrack, assemble it, race the bike, and then do the same thing to go home. Like, just shows the kind of commitment he had just to go racing, how hard it would have been back in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember that. I think the kids were in the trunk and the bike was in the back seat. Wasn't that right, Dave? <laughs> that was actually a, back in those days, it was a fairly common practice because we didn't have the fancy haulers that, that you see today. Mm. You had a rudimentary trailer or you took the bike apart and stuffed it in the back seat or station wagon, whatever you had. So <laughs> many of us started with very humble beginnings. <laughs> But we never thought anything of it because it was normal at that time. (laughs) Yeah, now we haven't touched a whole lot on it. And, uh, you know, you can go on the Internet and take a look at all this stuff. But looking at uh, Yvonne's career, starting ice racing, then he moved to flat track. And then I think at 59, he got that BSA gold star and started racing and won all those uh, you know, flat track championships and road racing championships in the 60s here in Canada. And then, you know, as you said, once he got hooked up with Fred Dealey Imports, 
on the Yamahas, then his, his career really uh, took off. But, um, you know, he did it the old fashioned way. Uh, but uh, I think his, his talent attracted a lot of sponsors and people like Trev Dealey was a big fan of his. Dave, you're probably uh, closer to this. Uh, at the end of his Yamaha years, uh, Trev Dealey realized that maybe Yamaha didn't have the, the most powerful bikes. This, of course, is before the Yamaha TZ700 and 750 came along. Uh, um, they parted where he moved to uh, Kawasaki uh, in, I believe, 1971. That uh, they parted, uh, they were very, very close, and he wished them uh, all the best. And of course, started the Kawasaki years with uh, with Manly. What do What do you know of that move from Yamaha to Kawasaki and how all that came about? Well, I, I, you're you're correcting what you say, uh, Pat. I think um, Yvonne got the offer from Kawasaki, and uh, Trevor absolutely gave Yvonne his blessing and full support. I, I think uh, Yamaha at the time was limited by the product that they had to offer. They were limited to a 350 bike at the time and the bigger bikes were uh, available from other brands. And Kawasaki quite frankly came up with a, a better offer. It was a case of a factory offer versus Trevor Dealey as a, a private individual who had means, but not at the level of the Kawasaki company. So, but uh, yes, Trevor uh, fully endorsed Yvonne's move and absolutely wished him well. So, yeah. but I, I do have a, a couple, if I may, a couple of other quick stories. And, and these were told to me by Yvonne. As you know, he uh, was a world champion snowmobile racer. And on one occasion, he won the Winnipeg to St. Paul 500, I think it's a 500 mile event. So we're chatting with Yvonne about that particular event. And he said to me, you know what, Dave, on day one, I lost the ski on the machine. He rode the entire day on one machine. <laughs> on, on one ski. Well, that, that sounds like Yvonne, if you can do it with one clip on, you can do it with one, uh, with one ski and well, it, it endorses what Jim was saying. Yvonne absolutely never gave up yeah. regardless. Jim, before we go to you, Stuart, I think we've got a couple of other uh, questions or comments. Yeah, Pat, thanks. We have a, a note from Jim Kelly's daughter, Shannon, who just wanted to uh, send her condolences to the entire Duhamel family. And she said that she likes to think that Jim and Yvonne are up in heaven road racing and ice racing together. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure those guys, uh, you know, had some uh, monumental battles on the racetrack over, uh, over the years. The great Jim Kelly, both of them, of course, in the Canadian Motorcycle Hall of Fame. But uh, for Yvonne, I think he is one of the a handful of motorcycle racers in the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame that he was inducted in, in, uh, I believe 1999, the same year he went into the AMA uh, hall of fame. And, uh, I had the honor of being there, uh, 2007 and, uh, Dave Lloyd, uh, you presented him with his Canadian motorcycle hall of fame, uh, medal. Uh, and, uh, what do you remember of that evening? Uh, I remember his speech was pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. Yeah. Well, actually, Pat, one correction. It, um, Yvonne was initially inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. Uh, the Motorcycle Hall of Fame didn't exist at the time. And I had been on the board of directors for the Motorsport Hall of Fame for many years, representing the motorcycling community and stock car racing. And uh, as the motorcycle representative for the board, uh, I was invited to present the, the induction medallion to Yvonne. And I have to tell you, that was a great privilege and honor. And uh, I fortunately have a photograph of that, which is a great memento for me. So uh, that was a special evening. Yeah, I know you shared it with us. I don't know if uh, Stuart got a chance to put it in, but I want to go to some of the photographs that have been uh, sent along because I'm sure those will uh, create uh, a lot of conversation and comment. Uh, 
But Stuart, before we go through the uh, the photos here, why don't you look after the questions or comments that have uh, just come in? Thanks, Pat. Uh, I've got one. I've got a link here for a, a YouTube video, so I'll have to maybe get that. I don't know if I can do it this evening, but I'll have to get it for a future episode or for our, our own YouTube channel. And that's uh, it's about the whole Duhamel family, but uh, it is done by the National Film Board of Canada. The next one is uh, Mike Walsh put in that uh, he first noticed Yvonne uh, when he used to watch at most for long pit wall. Yvonne used to turn his head 180 degrees while heading into turn one, looking back at his pit board. And he also, as you know, Pat, Mike used to do all the AMA nationals as a, as a privateer for years. And uh, he used to love running into, you know, the whole family, really. And he was fortunate enough to go and have dinner with uh, both. With, with, with all the duomels but both um, Yvonne and Sophie would take him out for dinner so he just said he was a real character and really enjoyed his time with him. Yeah and um, also uh, so many people have helped us out with photos and, and so forth so uh, Stuart why don't you take it away as we uh, take uh, a little walk down memory lane with Canadian motorcycle road racing icon Yvonne Duhamel. Early years Dave uh, I assume you were around. Uh, I can't quite see which motorcycle is that. The that's BSA the BSA, the, Pat. Uh, yeah, the BSA. Yeah, I remember Yvonne on that bike at Harewood Acres. At one of his first road races. Yeah. Yeah, and this that looked like a uh, and this uh, he first ran in the Daytona 200 on his BSA in '64. But 65, 66, and 67, he was on the Triumph and didn't have a whole lot of, uh, of luck until he made that switch to the Dealey Yamaha in 68 and ended up finishing second behind uh, Cal Rayborn. But there you saw the CMA uh, patch there on his shirt. And of course, he was multi-talented, motocross, ice racing, flat track. Uh, he did it all and, and won it all, won a couple of Canadian motocross championships as well. And that looks like uh, one of the Kawasaki's. Not sure if that's the, is that the 500? Yeah, judging by the front brake, I think so, Pat, yeah. And there's Mike Manley, and of course him and his brother Chris ran Manley Kawasaki. And uh, there is uh, Yvonne, I think that's Mike and his wife. And I think that is at uh, Mosport. Believe this was their 24 hour of Mosport uh, endurance bike. And this is probably 1971, I, I believe. I didn't get into the announcing for a couple of years and remember my first 24 hours of Mosport, but that race had been going on for a number of years. And uh, here's Yvonne on the bike. You can see it all. Kawasaki 500 all decked out with the lights for night. Um, Yvonne was known to be extremely quick racing at night in those 24-hour uh, races. And also absolutely brilliant in the wet. Did you ever encounter that uh, in any of the races that you had with him? I can... Uh... Early, I can remember a 24-hour race at, at uh, Heroin Acres. Um, I think Yvonne must, you know, I mean, how long he'd been road racing, I don't know at this point, but it was the middle of the night, it was raining, and I was coming into the chicane at Harewood, and there was two guys in front of me, and I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to get one guy in the middle and one guy coming out, and Yvonne got all three of us before we got to the chicane. <laughs> Great story, Jim. <laughs> that's, 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 it was embarrassing. It was, <laughs> yeah. Dave, I think this was a one-off ride he was offered at, I think, saint Gervais on this Norton. He'd never raced it before. I think he had limited practice on it and just went out there and won the race. Were you there? Uh, I was actually there, and uh, I was not riding. I actually have a photograph of Yvonne on that Norton, uh, which I took. And both Yvonne and I made eye contact and we were both grinning. 
And the reason for that is, as you know, Yvonne is in Kawasaki Leathers, and he was a Kawasaki rider at the time. <laughs> and the ride on the Norton was kind of naughty, if you will, uh, for that for that weekend. But Yvonne just went out and had some fun with it. Yeah, yeah. Green Kawasaki Leathers. I assume the Norton was yellow. Uh, I, I I think it was. It, belonged to, I believe, John Gray, who used to work at Firth Motorcycles in Toronto. Right. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a Firth North. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we know Yvonne could ride or race anything. I think this is a uh, 750 Kawasaki. Uh, is that an H2? I think 750. Uh, he was good on the production bikes as he was on the full race bikes. Yeah. I think he, he was absolutely fearless on anything he got on, whether two wheels or four snowmobiles. Uh, he, as Jim said earlier on, he was super determined and, and committed to what he was doing. Yeah. Story, can we just go back? I just want to look at, uh, I love some of these other like non racetrack or on the racetrack photos. Uh, there's uh, Yvonne on his mini bike. I assume that is uh, his daughter, Gina. And I, I'm going to guess that's Mario and not Miguel. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, you know, racing was, uh, was a family affair with the, uh, with the Duhamels. And one of my lasting um, memories of my first year of announcing, uh, Yvonne was there, of course, racing. And there was, I think, maybe five-year-old Miguel on his little mini bike blasting up through the infield at uh you know at uh most sport and little did i know that uh decades later i would get to announce his very first daytona 200 win in 91 and of course four other 200 wins after that mm. go ahead Stuart. that's uh that's a classic I don't know how he ended up running number 11. Uh, and there's a few other numbers. Of course, 43 was that picture we saw earlier on the Triumph at Daytona. But I think most of us uh, remember Yvonne uh, riding a Kawasaki that had the number 17 plate. As we do with Miguel, uh, we, we really identify with number 17 for both of them. And of course, here's, uh, you know, Yvonne, just an amazing uh, snowmobile racer uh, for uh, Skidoo and uh, won the 1970 World uh, Snowmobiling Championships before he went on to all of the other stuff. And of course, as we said, uh, a demon uh, on the frozen lakes of Quebec uh, in all the ice racing he did over the years. I think that's Michelle Mercy on number one, isn't it, Pat? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I it may be a little bit uh, a little bit early for Michelle, but and uh, this is uh, a shot of Formula 750 at most for it. I believe that is Greg Hansford on the Kawasaki behind him. Yep. That was Randy Hall and Kenny Roberts in that last picture. I don't know if you noticed that. Pat. Go back one. Yeah, I, yeah. There's Kenny, Kenny Hall. Robert. Yeah, and Roberts in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. And who's the gentleman in the sunglasses, Jim? Some you know cool him? California guy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Yvonne at uh, Daytona, of course, the original grandstands there. They're much bigger these days, but. Uh, they would uh, get those multi-rider teams, uh, do them all with, uh, and uh, uh, Jim, we had to put this one in for you. Uh, <laughs> you're actually ahead of Yvonne in this picture. How did that happen? Can I tell you a story? Can I, this, this one's not super long, but after I was done racing, working for Dunlop, Yvonne showed up at, um, here at, Mo at Mid Ohio, one, one time, he used to follow, uh, he and Sophie used to watch Mario and Miguel when they were racing. They'd traveled to all the yeah. nationals for a few years, but Yvonne showed up in mid-Ohio with, with a bunch of scrapbooks. And the first scrapbook he opened up had all of his speeding and traffic tickets from Montreal in there. And that, I mean, no, no, I mean, that's Yvonne. He kept all of those. 
But then he moved on to the other scrapbook and he said, Jim, I need to show you some pictures. And he kept showing me pictures. He said, see, here I am ahead of you. And here's another picture ahead of you. And here's another picture ahead of you. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, I got to go home. I know I got a photograph of Yvonne crashing right in front of me, you know. So I go home, get my scrapbook, bring it to the next race. <laughs> and there I am showing, oh, Yvonne, you're right. Here's another picture of you ahead of me. And here's another picture of you ahead of me. But look, here's a picture of you crashing right in front of me. So Yvonne looks at me and he looks at the picture and he says, straight as an arrow, he says, I remember that. He said, that's the time you knocked me off. <laughs> I mean, there's no comeback for that. <laughs> All right. Well, this one is a, uh, a classic. And now this is probably one that's in Yvonne's scrapbook. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the ones he showed me, I'm sure. You know? <laughs> yeah, was that the, and, and I love uh, this picture, uh, Steve Baker and his uh, girlfriend at the time, Trev Dealey, and of course, uh, Yvonne and, uh, and Sophie. Yeah, nice picture, yeah. That'd be the Yosh bike at Daytona probably, would it? Yeah, yeah. And again, um, you know, I remember the early years of superbike racing, of course, Reg Pridmore and <laughs> Steve McLaughlin on the BMWs and uh, Yvonne on the Kawasaki's and those early superbikes did not handle well. And I can re remember watching, I, I don't think I was announcing the PA at that time, Yvonne come into the tri over there and that bike at about 160 miles an hour plus just wobbling coming up across the line but he just kept it pinned and yeah. uh you know uh did well on the super bikes and of course raced here at the Gilles Villeneuve circuit when we had those motorcycle races for a couple of years in conjunction with the Canadian Grand Prix And this is an, I guess, uh, when they weren't at the racetrack, they did a little moose hunting in Northern Quebec. Uh, Mario, uh, Miguel, and, uh, and Yvonne. <laughs> and, you know, it was uh, when I was at Shannerville this past weekend, just before the racing started on uh, Sunday, I did a short two-minute tribute to Yvonne. And uh, remember those days when Miguel and Mario were just starting out in the you know, early to mid eighties and uh, Yvonne and the whole family being there. So they spent quite a few weekends at, uh, at Shannonville uh, as uh, in the early years. Yeah. Bob Hanson there in the center. Yeah. Dick Mann and uh, Donnie MD. Yeah. Dick Mann, Donnie, uh, Dick Mann, Donnie MD, uh, Bob Hanson and yeah. Steve Whitlock back there. Right. And uh, I, don't think that's uh, that's Daytona, but it's probably one of the other AMA uh, nationals. Or is this is that is he on the Yamaha there? Yeah, I can see the Kawasaki badge on the tank, Pat. Right. Yeah. So right, yeah, that's not '68. So that's that's a uh, probably early '70s AMA national where he took the win with uh, Man and uh, and Don MD on the podium. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Formula 750 race, I uh, believe 78 or 9 at uh, Mosport. And uh, Yvonne right in the middle of the row there, Johnny Sakato, Skip Axlin, uh, 27, right there. Those were huge uh, events back then. Jim, were you there at any of those? Uh, no, I think I'd stopped by that time, Pat. I was, um, so yeah, I think that was just after I quit. Right. And there you can see the intensity and the, and the focus in Yvonne's eyes. This is an interesting picture. And uh, I think at the end, Stuart has got a page just thanking everyone, including Bill Petro and John Walker, with one word who helped us uh, with some of these photos. Here's Yvonne sitting on Robert's Yamaha bike. I don't know if you 
You know, I, I guess if you could run leathers uh, on a Norton, green leathers on a Norton, you could do it on a Yamaha, even if it's uh, Kenny Roberts' bike. Oh, here you go, Jim. This is what another one in Yvonne's scrapbook. I think I'm getting ready to pass him. <laughs> so this is Yvonne on the triple, and you were on the Ernie White uh, Yamaha? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was a Swiss frame, that ugly frame. Right, yeah. the ugly frame. Yeah. yeah. And Yvonne here on the Yamaha, I guess this is, yeah. uh, he's on the Yamaha with, I believe that's Patrick Bonds yeah. uh, behind him. I wonder if that's an international race. It might be. Yeah. And this, uh, yeah, just go back one there. Yeah, this these were those uh, photos they would take at Daytona, yeah. uh, Gary Nixon and, uh, and Yvonne. And uh, Paul Smart. Know, yeah, Paul yeah and, Paul, and Paul Smart. Yeah, yeah. I, I think at times, I mean, the tribe from DSA guys would go there with four or five different factory bikes. It was uh, mm. a really cool era in the history of the Daytona 200. And of course, uh, Yvonne, uh, you know, <laughs> he just kept racing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I can remember calling some of his uh, BMW Battle of the Legends races at Daytona. And quite often, Rob Iannucci with Team Obsolete would bring him in to run uh, his uh, equipment, particularly at uh, at Mosport when they'd have the VRRA Festival. I believe this is a, is that a, a matchless, uh, Dave? At Matchless G50. Right, yeah. And that is an incredible shot of Yvonne there. Yeah, just lean right over. And I think this is probably, you know, we talked about Yvonne winning the two 250 races at Daytona and being there in victory lane when uh, Miguel won his first of five Daytona 200s. But I think getting the opportunity to go over to Bull Door and race with Miguel and Mario uh, on that bike, I think, uh, you know, was probably one of his proudest moments to, to be able to do that. Now, there are two of the greatest characters and riders in the history of road racing. That is a, an awesome photo. Yeah. That's Alan Labrosse. I had reached out to Alan, but didn't quite uh, get a hold of him. I was hoping uh, he could come on tonight, but... Uh, uh, Alan, of course, who managed Miguel for a long time, and I think also did some work with uh, with Yvonne and Alan. Of course, a fine racer in his in his own right. We had him on the show a number of number of months ago, and uh, Nathan Nasland uh, sent us this photo, Jim. Um, this is from that 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the Canadian Grand Prix. Uh, you, uh, Nathan, and uh, and Yvonne. What? What did Yvonne have to say? Uh, I assume he got a chance to go out on the racetrack. You guys must have reminisced uh, uh, quite a bit about your racing uh, racing days on that weekend. We had we had really had fun that weekend. I mean, I mean it was what I mean. Uh, Yvonne was never short of a word, as you may remember. When he wanted to say something, he could say it. But I do remember sitting with uh, meeting with Nathan, obviously that weekend. But sitting with Yvonne and. Um, Somebody, I can't remember the, the, who the guy was, but he came up, he had quite a few photographs uh, that he wanted um, signed. And you know, he asked if Angon and I would sign the photographs. There was, you know, a few photographs of me that the guy wanted signed. But when Yvonne, when he gave Yvonne this pile of photographs to sign, <laughs> Yvonne started signing. First it was one or two. Then the guy kept reaching in and getting more and more. Finally, Yvonne looked at him and he says, if you're going to sell these on eBay, I want my money now. He said, <laughs> he said, I'm not going to sign all these if you're going to sell these. So, so the guy looked at him and then Yvonne winked at him and then signed the rest of them. And the guy was happy as a clam. But he, he loved to tease, man. He loved to tease people. You know. So. Stuart, why did you take all those photos to Yvonne? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I once need the guy saw that Yvonne was sitting beside me, I was dead meat. I got about three signatures in, but the other guy was the guy was busy with Yvonne for a long time. So. All right, uh, Stuart. Before we go to this one of uh, Dave Lloyd uh, giving the uh, award there at the Hall of Fame to Yvonne, I think we've got a bunch of questions or comments. Uh, I'd like you to take care of. Okay, thanks, Pat. Um, uh, from Paulo, could Dave comment on why Yvonne was never given the Order of Canada? Good point. Certainly deserving as far as I know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they do that uh, posthumously, but um, maybe we'll, uh, we'll look into that. Go ahead, Stuart. We've got another one. Uh, I believe it's from Daryl Fletcher out West. Um, just a comment. He was a legend where he grew up because his best friend's dad had seen him race at Westwood. Apparently, he rode like a wild man, almost crashing often. A legend. <laughs> that was a normal race, Rivon. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nathan Nas, and I'll read his. Uh, the year was 1975, and he was working at Alberta Cycle in Edmonton. For vacation, he'd ride his CB750 down at Laguna Seca to see his first AMA road race. Yvonne and our adopted Canadian, Steve Baker, represented Canada. Yvonne at the time either won, crashed, or had a mechanical. At this race in 75, Yvonne took the lead and Kenny Roberts was second. It really looked like Yvonne was going to win, but then he had an incident in the corkscrew and that ended his race. Roberts won. After witnessing that race, I was hooked and took the same CB750 that I rode down to Laguna Seca and modified it for racing. Yvonne was a true Canadian hero. I got to meet Yvonne on a number of occasions afterwards, and he was always down to earth and had an amazing sense of humor. Godspeed, Yvonne. Thank you for that, Nathan Aslan. Well said. Uh, Stuart, uh, what else have we got there? Uh, we've got a couple that you guys already uh, answered about them racing together that we discussed. And the one about them hitting the moose up north, the damage in the front and side was done by the one jump off the the the, the side back in the woods. Sophie never saw it coming. She was laughing about the whole thing to how she got to scare the crap out of herself. So I guess that was uh, a family road trip, I'm sure, going to or from a race. Okay. I, now, here I thought, you know, uh, <coughs> when he wasn't racing, he did a little moose hunting, but obviously that is not the case. So thanks for clarifying that. Anything else, Stuart, before we go well, on? We're, we're clear, Pat. So just uh, okay. let me know. So, Dave, what do you remember of this uh, moment, handing over the Hall of Fame uh, medallion medal there to uh, to Yvonne? Well, <clears throat> as I said earlier, Pat, um, it quite an honor and, a, and a, it, for me, an honor and a privilege. Um, particularly so because I knew Yvonne so well, and I had seen him from his very early days in road racing and working his way through. And uh, one comment I'd like to make is that the majority of the photographs that we've seen tonight are of Yvonne road racing. Um, we've made mention of his talents in many disciplines, uh, including motocross and dirt track or scrambling as I used to call it back then, um, uh, speedway, flat track, whatever. Uh, he was not only good, he was a champion. He, he was the top. Um, back in the 60s, the mid 60s, there was a, um, a scrambling challenge series of Canada versus New England. And I believe it was 65, Yvonne was a member of the Canadian scrambling team. They went down there and in the course of the event, they had uh, 20 minute uh, motos, uh, four of them per each class. In the 500 CC class, Yvonne won all four events. It was just absolutely amazing. And yeah. the same thing in flat track or speedway racing, ice racing. Um, an another area was, his, we made mention of his stock car racing. And Yvonne told me this himself uh, when he was down there at North Wilkesboro, I believe. Yeah. Junior Dunlevy offered him the ride in the car. He apparently said to Yvonne, you haven't done this before, so you're probably going to get tired. 
when you're tired, just pull in and we'll put in another driver. Well, as you know, Yvonne not only stuck to the seat, but he finished 10th. And I believe his one and only NASCAR race. Um, yeah. Absolutely mind boggling. Yeah, yeah, qualified 15th that day and ended up finishing 10th. The other thing, uh, as I was going back over some other stuff, uh, he also did a bunch of sports car racing at Moe Sport. And I think uh, teamed up to win a six-hour race, uh, racing a Porsche, and then also won in a uh, Datsun 240Z. So yeah, Beating um, Corvettes and larger cars. Yeah, two or four wheels. He yeah. could win on it, and he could be competitive yeah. on it. Stuart, go ahead. And this is our uh, good friends, Pete and Carol, who are uh, usually... Uh, you know, joining us for the show. Uh, this was, uh, I think, back in 2004 at Daytona. Uh, but this was Yvonne, um, you know, very, very friendly, always willing to talk to, uh, to race fans, very down to earth and grounded. Uh, as his sons, Mario and, uh, and Miguel turned out and uh, their daughter, Gina. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a great, uh, a great shot. And even after his racing career was over, uh, I think it was uh, a real plus for Miguel and for Mario when he was racing that their dad was there yeah. with all that experience and know-how and, and positive energy uh, at, the, uh, at the racetrack. Go ahead, Stuart. And this is one, uh, this is the Canadian uh, Motorsports uh, Expo uh, back in, I believe, 2010, I had the honor to uh, interview both uh, Miguel and, uh, and Yvonne. Uh, you know, I can't remember all the stories, but he was also always a, an amazing, amazing interview, except for, I think, one press conference back, uh, this is a long time ago, for a big uh, motorcycle race at Mosport. I was the MC. And, you know, Yvonne was there and we're uh, announcing, uh, you know, doing the interview and every one of the answers was a one word answer was either no or yes for the first three or four uh, questions. And I was starting to really sweat. And uh, finally, Yvonne opened up and uh, it ended up being uh, a great interview, but uh, just an amazing uh, human being and an amazing talent. And uh, you know, certainly, uh, I think he was very, very proud of, of, of all of his kids uh, yeah. who took their own path. Miguel, of course, focused on road racing. Uh, Mario, I believe, is uh, working with uh, rider training, I think involved with ASM right now. Uh, but apparently he was an amazing uh, dancer and did uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Gina, I don't know real well, but what a wonderful family and uh, our condolences go out to uh, the entire Duhamel family. And I think uh, the entire Canadian motorcycle uh, racing community, because, uh, you know, he was involved in almost every aspect of the sport that uh, a lot of us uh, feel that sense of loss, knowing that uh, this great Canadian racer and multi-time champion is no longer with us. And again, Stuart, these are just some of the people that helped us out with, uh, with photos. I also want to mention Nathan Naslin and Pete and Carol, who sent us some photos. And uh, Dave Lloyd, I think you sent us some. And Jim, did you? No, you sent me photos of you at the Jays game. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm sure you've got lots more photos of you ahead of, uh, of Yvonne. Uh just, just, the, just that one really good one that I can think of off the top of my head. You know? <laughs> right. Stuart, I think we may have a, a couple of more comments or questions for Dave or, or Jim before we wrap it up. We've just got a comment from Shannon Pat, and she said that we were correct and that that was Michelle Mercy ice racing on the number one. And she knows that because her brother was in the back of the pack and he raced against Michelle in those days. Okay. So, and uh, uh, we're going to have to get Michelle Mercier on a future edition of track announcers notebook to talk about his amazing career and uh, and also of course uh, all the amazing work the fast riding school um uh, stop by and talk to his uh, his mechanic there on the weekend he of course sold that uh 
back last October, but the school still going uh, amazingly well. Uh, Jim, Al, anything else, Stuart, in the Q and A before we? We're clear, Pat. We're all good to go. Uh, uh, Dave Lloyd, uh, how will you remember Yvonne uh, Dumel? Um, obviously, fondly and with a great deal of admiration and respect. Uh, Yvonne is known, I'm going to say loved and respected on a worldwide basis and deservedly so. Um, he set a very high benchmark and uh, I, somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was yourself, Pat, that said uh, very unlikely that we'll see his like again. He was such a unique and talented individual and just a lovely man, just a, a good man. So uh, my condolences to Sophia and the family and uh, uh, Yeah, it's, it. it's tough, Dave, I know. Uh, Jim Allen, you um, not only were there racing against Yvonne, but uh, I think it may have given you uh, a great deal of, uh, of you know, a, a great deal of satisfaction and pride that you were also there for his son, Miguel, and uh, worked with him for all those years, whether it was the Daytona 200 or AMA, AMA Superbike. How will you remember your friend and fellow competitor, Yvonne Duhamel? Well, it's so tough that, um, as Dave said, he was, you know, he's one of a, one of a kind. Uh, um, you know, I just, uh, I guess the thing that, you um, when I, I got to know Yvonne probably better when I, the years I worked with Dunlop, you know, probably better as a person because I would often take, he would, he would come looking for me. I'd go looking for him. We'd chat, you know, at the racetrack when Miguel and Mario were racing or when Miguel and when Mario stopped. But, um, you know, I just, I just, um, I just, just remember his sense of humor and the fact that he had just a tremendous um, love for life. I mean, I worked with many racers, some eventually went on to be world champion and, and some multi-time national champions. Many of those guys, whether it's their own, just their makeup or what, they're easy to respect, but difficult to, to like. Um, and that's not uncommon. Yvonne was easy to respect and easy to like. And as Dave said, Dave used the word love. And I think, you know, I love the guy. I mean, I just did. And, and I just, you know, I just, He's a good, he was a good guy, a good father, you know, and, and a great family guy, you know, and I just, I think about Sophie's, you know, what, seven, 70 years, 65 years, a straight man, do you to Hamel? How do you follow, <laughs> how do you follow that up? I just, you know, I wish her the best and I wish the family the best, but, you know, I, I miss the guy, Dave's right, we'll never, ever see his like again. And old guys say that all the time, you know, but the truth is we'll never see that like again. Yeah, indeed, he was uh, one of a kind and uh, one great racer and human being. Yeah, absolutely. So, Stuart, uh, we're going to throw it to you and then uh, wrap up. And again, uh, to everyone out there who, uh, you know, had the, uh, the honor to watch or know uh, Yvonne Duhamel, we're all uh, feeling a little bit, of, uh, little bit of pain over the last uh, week or so. Yeah, thanks, Pat. I uh, just want to send my condolences to the whole Duhamel family as well. And just like to thank you guys for letting me just share in this experience. Uh, obviously, he came along before I was really born, but certainly I've, I've read about him and listened to a lot of the stories. So to get to hear it from, from you guys that were there to actually watch and be a part of it. it uh, he's clearly the, the very first hero of Canadian motorcycle racing, was a huge icon. And uh, like you said, there isn't going to be another one like him. So on that note, uh, we're going to close out this uh, special edition of Track Announcer's Notebook Paying Tribute to the great Yvonne Duhamel. Uh, and again, uh, on behalf of all of us here, our condolences to Sophie, to Mario, Gina, and, uh, and Miguel. Godspeed, Yvonne Duhamel, forever number 17. On that note, we'll see you here next Monday night. Be well. Uh, thanks again to Dave Lloyd and Jim Allen for joining us to share their memories and stories. And again, a big thank you to everyone who provided us with those photographs and images of Yvonne Duhamel that we were able to uh, share with you tonight. Good night, be safe, and be well.
Thanks again, Jim and Dave. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Ryan. thanks, Jim. Thanks, Dave. That was great, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. All right. All Quit saying it, Jim. Now, and Jim, if if you need if you need any of those photos of you ahead of Yvonne, let us know. <laughs> And thank you for everyone who uh, joined us on the uh, on the show tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks.